Hi there everyone, Matt here. I hope you're well. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can configure scan to email in Microsoft 365 for free. That's right, absolutely nothing. You've got everything you need in your tenant, uh, providing you've got a couple of licenses spare, uh, in order to do this out of the box. So, um, what are we going to learn today? We're going to learn how to securely set up a multifunction device, so a scanner or a printer uh, or an MFD, to send email via Office 365 to uh, a mailbox, whatever the destination may be, via your tenant. Um, it's ever so simple. It's going to save you some money if you're using a third party service to achieve this, and it's going to increase your ability to audit the service and make sure that the data stays all in one place, i.e. Microsoft 365. Uh, it's going to take about five minutes. Uh, I'm going to do it all via screen share and show you every step of the way what you need to do. So we're going to move across from my living room and into my study to go and do that right about uh, now. And we're back. So uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is jumping straight into it. We're going to need to set up an entry user. Uh, we can see here that I've already set one up that is called Scanner. I've given it an email address and filled in all the information we needed to do. Now, one thing that I do suggest you do is you log in as this user, okay? Set up Authenticator or anything else that you need to do, even though we won't need to, but it can get in the way of authentication later on when we're trying to uh, set up the multifunction device that we're using. Um, and also just open up Outlook, make sure that the, uh, the mailbox has been provisioned. Um, you're going to need to assign a license then uh, in order to achieve all of that. I've used Business Premium. You can just use whatever you've got available. I'd recommend you just using an e, uh, Exchange Plan 1 license. Uh, don't use your E3, E5s or anything like that because they're expensive and it doesn't need to be. It just needs access to Exchange. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to need after we've got our user set up and we've validated that the mailbox works is we're going to need a conditional access policy and a named location. So... Uh, to go there, you need to navigate to uh, protection and conditional access on the left hand side and open up the conditional access blade, go to named locations and then create an IP ranges location. You can see I've already created one here. You want to make sure that the um, location is named and is marked as trusted and then you can put in your range or ranges of addresses where um, the MFDs are located. So this needs to be the external IP of a site where you've got an MFD that needs to send through this uh, through this account. Okay. Um, so for my testing purposes, I've just got my house and I've locked it down to a slash 32. So just that one IP address, there's no range. Um, obviously you can set it up as several different locations with seven, several different IPs to make it easier if you prefer doing it that way, or you can just have one location, call it my site IPs, uh, and then have all the IPs. It's entirely up to you. Once you've got that defined, you need to go to conditional access and create the actual policy. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, you want to also have a little review. So for example, block legacy authentication, that might be a policy that gets in the way if you've got that set up in your tenant. Go and exclude the scanner account from that policy. Multi-factor authentication required for users, exclude it from that as well. If you are having trouble identifying what policies apply to the user, just use the conditional access what if tool and that will help show you um, what policies will apply to that account. Okay, so once you've done all of that, we want to create a new policy. I've already created mine. It's called scan to email and I'm going to take you through the settings. So you want to give the policy a name. You want to include just the scanner user. You don't want to include anybody else in this policy. Okay, very important. Otherwise, you're going to mess some stuff up for people. In target apps, you want to include all cloud apps. And just, just bear with me because you're probably not sure where this is going. We're bolting this down to only use Exchange Online, but you'll, you'll see how that works in a sec. And you want to go to exclude and then exclude the Office 365 Exchange Online. When you search for this, just make sure that instead of searching for Exchange, which doesn't bring up anything, you search for Office, because otherwise you'll spend ages trying to find it. I know I did the very first time I set this up. In network, exactly the same thing. You want to include any network location and exclude your uh, trusted IP addresses, okay? And then in conditions, just validate that um, the location's populated properly from network because that's a new feature. When you go down to access control, you want to hit block access. Why do you want to do that? Think about it. Got it? We're blocking access to anything that isn't your trusted IPs and that isn't accessing Exchange Online. Okay? So if they try and access, if someone if someone nefariously tried to log in using the credentials for this account to SharePoint, blocked. Okay? If they tried to log in from anywhere that wasn't one of your site IPs, blocked. All right? 
it would take a lot more policies to do it the other way around. So it's easier to block but uh, and then exclude some locations than it is to set up a load of grants. Okay. Make sure that when you've got all of that configured and sorted out, you set the policy to on and then save the policy. Or obviously, if you want to test it first, put it into report only, run a few tests, and then just use the what if tool uh, or the sign in logs for the account to va validate that the policy is doing what you want it to. Two more things to configure very quickly. The first thing is a retention policy. So you want to go to compliance.microsoft.com and open the compliance portal. Move your way over down here to data lifecycle management. Go to Microsoft 365 and then click new retention policy. Um, I've already created mine, my remove scanner email. So we'll just go through the policy settings very quickly right now. This is effectively going to remove any content that's sat in the mailbox after seven days, meaning that you don't end up with a load of potentially delicate scanned content in that mailbox um, that uh, that falls into the wrong hands if this account were to get compromised it's just a little value add for security set the policy up as a static policy set it for on in exchange and off for any other locations in your tenant and then make sure you include the scanning mailbox but don't include anything else because obviously you'll start deleting other people's emails follow the wizard through to the end make sure you set the policy for seven days and then set to delete content based on when items were created okay the policy will take a week to take effect because obviously it's got to build up a week's worth of content in the mailbox but monitor it make sure that it's working as intended okay once that's done there's one more thing that we need to do and that is we have to head over to powershell and grant basic authentication or smtp authentication rights for that mail user. We do that using this command look called set dash CAS mailbox. Um, I've already connected to Exchange Online using the connect Exchange Online CMD lit. So the first thing I'm going to do is run set CAS mailbox, uh, make sure that the identity is set to the SMTP address of your mailbox and then set SMTP client authentication disabled to false. You see that just takes a second to run. We then want to get the mailbox. So just set that to get dash CAS mailbox and then the identity is your mailbox and then select SMTP client star. That will pull back the value that you're looking for and we can see that it is set to false. So that is it, it's all configured, it's all ready to go. The last thing that we need to do is test it. So if we open up PowerShell ISE just here, you can see I've already configured some parameters for send mail message. Uh, Microsoft says this is deprecated and not recommended to use. It still works, so I use it for testing purposes. Make sure that you run this line first. This will set our credential variable to get the credential. I've already run it, so I don't need to rerun it. Uh, you need to use the email address of the um, scan to email mailbox and the password that you specified uh, when you created the user or reset the password. Um, just whatever the most recent one is or the actual correct one. Uh, these are our parameters for send dash mail message. Um, you can add the additional parameters here into the splat line if you do want to, but I just copied this from Microsoft's website and then added the bits that I needed. So uh, we're forcing the credential to use dollar cred, which we've pre-populated. Uh, we're ensuring that we make a TLS connection by using use SSL and making sure that we use port 587. So if we just go ahead and run this line here, uh, you can see that we get a new email. It comes in successfully and that works. So all you now need to go and do is go and set your multifunction device to use the credentials that you used in dollar cred. So the email address and the password for the scan to email account and you are all good to go. Um, so that's it. It's it's fairly simple to do. And uh, like I said, it is free apart from obviously the cost of a license. But, you know, an exchange plan one license is something like a pound a month. Um, if you got any value out of this, uh, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this kind of content, do you remember I make uh, plenty more of it? So give me a follow. Um, and lastly, if you've got any questions or want to know anything more about this or any other M365 uh, topics, just leave a comment down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. It is appreciated and I'll see you again on the next video.